Today, I want to take a look at a weird set of cards that I received as an anonymous donation. There are a set of 24 hand-drawn cards which depict runes. Each card is loaded down with information, connecting the rune to astrology and the major arcana. I'm not sure if these were meant for fortune-telling readings, or as some form of flashcards like Quizlets, but I think they are neat. Oh, this? Don't worry, it's just stigmata. Pass me a napkin, and don't you dare tell my mama. Er, actually, upon further inspection, it looks to be ketchup. Anyway, as you might have noticed, these cards are minuscule, with three-point print, so I'm going to be switching to scans to better show off the artwork. One more thing I want to point out before I switch is to show off the card backs, as it looks like each one is unique, with different printed text and leaf decals which does make them marked cards, and as a result, makes them invalid for playing trick-based games like you can with a standard tarot deck. And I have a suspicion that these cards might fit together to make a puzzle, but I have not been able to assemble them quite yet. Anywho, on to the cards. First up is Fehu, and each card has a unique design, but a few of the design elements are repeated between the cards. Beginning with the number of the rune, and a small picture to represent the rune, with Fehu having a heart graphic. There is also a corresponding tarot card, astrology symbol, and tree, oddly enough. I'm not sure how these card symbols and trees were selected, but it is certainly interesting. Fehu corresponds to the tower card, the Aries astrology symbol, and the elder tree. There are also a set of objects, concepts, and traits to better contextualize the rune. These cards are so dense, with Fehu having stray words like antler, Freyr's weapon at Ragnarok, spiritual slash artistic creativity, garden rune, wealth, cattle, and conscious power control. Finally, there's usually a line or two which I think indicates the intended psychic reading for the card. And some cards even have a reverse reading as well. I think the normal reading for this one is movable, negotiable wealth, with the reverse being failure. Someone put so much love and time into the design, I just wish they had access to bigger paper to help with readability. Next up is Uruz, which has the spiral symbol. It is connected to the High Priestess Tarot, the Taurus Zodiac sign, and the Birch Tree. Some of the concepts surrounding the rune are aurochs, or wild oxen, freedom, primal power, wild spirit, and the strength to shape creation. I think the intended reading is creative force, breakdown, and to build up anew, with the reverse reading being failure at creativity, drastic change, and illness. To me, the breakdown and build a new interpretation of the rune reminds me more of the death tarot than the high priestess, which represents the need for legal counsel. But these things are intentionally vague so that they may elicit feelings of semiotic pareidolia in the querent. But not to get too deep too quickly. Third is Thorisaz, which has the lightning bolt symbol, corresponds with the Emperor Tarot, the Mars astrological sign, and the mighty oak tree. For concepts and objects, we have Thor's hammer, makes sense with the lightning bolt, he isn't the god of hammers, after all. Active defense or conscious mind, thorns to ward off evil, supernatural beings, and the monstrous masculine, which causes illness in women. With the reading being force that frees or fights a foe, and the reverse being passive or unconscious defense. Which reminds me about what Bruce Lee was talking about when he said, be like water to flow without thinking or consciously reacting. Meaning is what you make it, after all. Anzus has the symbol of lips, the death tarot, Venus astrology symbol, and is represented by the ash tree. I wish I was more of an arborist to understand the deeper meaning of these botanical illusions, but my roots are in chemistry under botany. Concepts surrounding the rune are the rainbow bridge to Asgard, Word, incantation, poetry, or song. Honesty, straightforwardness, a god, mouth, reason, intelligence, and it signifies God, the divine force in action. 
I wonder why it's a generic god, instead of another Norse god like Odin, who fits a lot of these characteristics. The reading is the power of using one's own mind wisely, with the reverse reading being false counsel or to beware of advisors, which, alongside the Venus astrological symbol, really seems to fit better with the High Priestess Tarot. Fifth is Raytho, which has the symbol of a wheel, or maybe more broadly the Wheel of Time, or the Wheel of Seasons, or maybe the Dharma Chakra, except the illustration for the larger wheel only has six spokes. The corresponding card is the Hierophant, Sagittarius astrology symbol, and for the only time in the video, no specific tree, which is doubly weird since a couple later runes have two trees apiece. Related concepts are transmutation of energies, motion, journey, process, road, and exercising leadership and good judgment. The intended reading is likely performing the right action without hesitation, with the reverse being disruptions of the inquirer's plan. Interesting verbiage, by the way, because the fortune seeker in tarot readings is called the querent, but the inquirer does just as well. Next is Kanaz, which has the image of a torch corresponding to the chariot tarot, the Venus astrological sign again, sharing it with Enzus, and the pine tree. Concepts surrounding the card are the gift of male life force, the infinitive to know, physical and spiritual enlightenment, creativity and craftsmanship, artistry, and quite appropriately, the metaphorical carrying of a torch, which indicates burning with passion. The reading is unmaking for the sake of remaking, which has a lovely ring to it, with the reverse reading being loss of perception and direction, which is a decent rhyme. This is followed by Gebo, which has the image of a gift, more specifically of rings, corresponding to the lover's tarot, Pisces astrology sign, and either the ash or elm tree. I would let Ray, though, have one of those trees for parody, but it is okay. Concepts around the rune are the psychic joining of two people with a magical result, hospitality, generosity, and exchange. The reading is likely uniting gift and giver in equal exchange of energy, with the card not having a well-defined reverse reading, but the author speculates it to be the querent giving or sacrificing. I suspect this would be without gain or benefit. Next is Wunyo, and I am so appreciative that the phonetics have been written on the actual cards. It has the symbol of scales, corresponding to the strength tarot, the Leo astrological sign, and the ash tree. I feel like there is a missed opportunity to connect it to the justice tarot and the Libra astrological sign, but ash is still a lovely tree. Concepts surrounding the rune are masculinity and the rune of balance. The reading is likely that through harmony with nature, one can experience delight, wonder, bliss, and happiness, which would fit perfectly in a fortune cookie if it hasn't been tried already. The reverse is the opposite of joy, that being misery and personal ruin. This is succeeded by Hagalaz, which has the symbol of hail, corresponding with Zewildo Tarot, the Aquarius astrology sign, and the yew tree. Concepts adjacent to the rune are the six directions in space, which I assume are based on the XYZ coordinate system in 3Space, holy, complete change, that being spelled H-O-L-Y, not W-H-O-L-L-Y, for the record, the mother rune and cosmic egg, and a really cute snack. The reading appears to be disruption or the need to prepare for change, with the rune not having a reverse reading. I think it would be weird to say, prepare for things to stay the same, although that would be oddly comforting. Next is Nothis, with the symbol of a trident corresponding to the devil tarot, the Capricorn astrology sign, and the beech tree. Pitchforks and goats go together after all. Concepts around the rune include know thyself, need and forcing fate from need, the evil apple, delays, constraint, change, and chronic problems. The intended reading is probably that the rune counsels the sufferer to be toughened by adversity, with the reverse reading being impeded by the free flow of events. To take a moment, I just want to remind you that you are stronger than you think, 
and that although it might not be the best time for you to be thriving right now, no feeling is final, and that there is always a tomorrow on the horizon. It can be easy to be overwhelmed in the moment, but nothing is ever as bad as it first seems. You will be able to get through this. Now, back to the cards, with Isa next, which has a symbol which is similar to Hale, that being ice, corresponding to the Hermit Tarot, the Moon astrological sign, and the Elder Tree. Concepts involved with the sign are the hailstorms and the frozen, unchangeability, the principle of static existence, stillness, calmness, and this lovely phrase, static, beautiful, and useless. The meaning seems to be the counterforce to evolution. You know what Gorilla Grodd is after. There is no reverse reading, but I think fluidity or evolution are obvious ones. Following this is Yera, Abundance, which has the symbol of a red spiral, which might be an abstraction for a calendar year. Next time I get an anonymous arcane or occultic donation, a manual would be much appreciated. The rune corresponds to the Fool Tarot, the Soul Astrology Sign, and the Oak Tree, same as Thurisaz. Concepts linked to the rune are the cyclical pattern of the universe, the Wheel of Time, the end of the dark period of the soul, to reap and sow, yin and yang, and rewarded efforts. The rune seems to mean to tune into the flow of cosmic force in martial arts or ritual, which might be meditation or mindfulness, maybe, with the reverse reading being that things won't be as good as they first seemed, which is a softer way of saying disappointment. After Yera is Iwas, which has the world tree as its symbol. It corresponds to the Hanged Man Tarot, the Scorpio astrological sign, and the Yew Tree, which it shares with Hagalaz. I'm not sure what genus the World Tree is. I mean, if it's even made of wood after all. The rune is related to the connection between worlds, indicating a spiritual ascent or exploration, and has the chilling phrase, Spine Straightener. The reading is likely to mean a difficult or dangerous problem turned to your advantage, with no reverse reading, although the concepts of spiritual regression or descent into madness do not bode well for a reading. This is followed by Perthro, or change. It is represented abstractly by the image of a cauldron, but fits closely with the concept of fate, which is needless to say a challenge to depict pictorially. The rune corresponds with the Wheel of Fortune tarot, which is spot on, the Saturn astrological sign, and the beech tree. Eh. Concepts close to the rune include unexpected luck, the laws of cause and effect, the mysteries of fate, the chance lock cup, and the bishop chess piece. The reading is likely to concern the laws of cause and effect, with the reverse reading being that events will not happen as expected. For some reason, I am reminded about Skull Knight and the greater men who are rising above their fate. Although, I think that is just me being impatient for the conclusion of Berserk. Speaking of which, I wonder what the brand of sacrifice is based on, as there are a lot of pagan influences in Berserk. Back on topic, Alyes is next. It has what I believe to be a tombstone for its image, but there is also a note that the rune is related to the elk and the actual rune looks a little bit like antlers. The rune corresponds with the moon tarot, the cancer astrological symbol, and the yew tree again. Concepts linked to the rune are birth, protection, transition from material to superior, the maker of sacred places, friendship and trust, masculine up and feminine down. The reading looks to be the striving of human consciousness ever upward towards enlightenment with the reverse reading being Death Date, which is spooky. What is a little lighter is Sowilo. What is a little lighter is Sowilo, which has the sun as its symbol. The rune corresponds perfectly with the sun tarot, the soul astrological sign, and the juniper tree. Concepts close to the rune are lightning, movement, energy, luck, strength, success, health, or the need to rest to restore it guidance and journey, illumination, victory, and clarification, which is just so much information to pack on one little card. 
the reading might be the natural attraction between the forces of Earth and Heaven, again, with no specific reverse reading. I would think it to mean the disunification of the physical and spiritual. Next is Tiwaz, which has the spear as its symbol. The rune corresponds with the Justice Tarot and the Libra astrological sign, which at least those two go together. And then, once again, the oak tree. The concepts around the rune are self-sacrifice, law, spiritual purity, wolves, universal father god, who may or may not be the one above all, honor, justice, and righteousness. The reading seems to be no success without loss, like no pain, no gain, with the reverse reading being waning power. After that, we have Burkano, companionship. I think the symbol for this rune is a sunset, maybe? The rune corresponds with the Empress Tarot, the Virgo astrological sign, and the birch tree. The concepts in the vicinity of the rune are Great Mother Earth, which is borrowing from Gaia in classical mythology, the maypole, and the rune of mystery, birth, life, and death. The reading is potentially new beginnings of all kinds, with the reverse reading being cessation of growth and impending problems. Yikes. Awas, not to be confused with Iwas, has the horse symbol. The rune corresponds with the lover's tarot again, and the Gemini astrology sign, but Pisces is mistakenly used in the card's artwork. The rune is represented by both the oak and ash tree. Two trees make sense in the context of the lovers and the twins. The concepts represented by the rune are the extension through union of spiritual or psychic energy. I think the reading is along the lines of opposites working together towards a common goal, with the reverse being loosening or breaking of bonds between individuals, which is sad but consistent. Immediately after is Malnaz, which has a pretty holly leaf as its symbol. The rune corresponds with the Magician Tarot, the Jupiter astrological sign, and of course, the holly tree. The rune is intertwined with the kindred and cheerfulness, joy, the idea that every man is master, that all are relations, and is the rune of the rational mind, where thought and memory interact. The reading appears to indicate self-realization, fulfillment of human potential and acceptance, with the reverse being confrontation with an enemy. There's a little more than that, but tasteful censorship. Quickly returning to the next rune is Laguz, which has the symbol of running water. It corresponds with the star's tarot and the moon, but more specifically the waning crescent moon, as well as the willow tree this time. The rune is in the realm of lakes and leeks, like the vegetable or my favorite magic sealed and drafter, the basic energy and secret source of organic life. The reading looks to be new life or creativity welling up from the depths of consciousness, with the reverse being the command, don't wait, change circumstances now, and memory loss. Maybe even writer's block too. The 22nd rune is the Fiery Ingwaz, which is a significant number as there are only 22 members of the Major Arcana, hence the repeats. The corresponding tarot is again judgment with the astrological sign being the new moon and the tree being the apple tree. The rune is left of concepts like the hearth, firebrands, and the seed energy needed for gestation to result in plenty. The reading could be signifying the cycle of withdrawal, transformation, and return, with the reverse being the somewhat optimistic, only slightly lessened outcome, so minor adjustments to expectations may be needed. Onto the home stretch with Othala, which has the house symbol. Again, the rune corresponds to the moon tarot, and this time the full moon astrological sign, as well as the hawthorn tree. Concepts beside the rune are ancestral property and the inalienable inherited qualities of a clan. The reading may refer to your family or your place in the community, with the reverse being marriage against the express wishes of family or loss and delay, 
which is incredibly specific, but I guess can be taken metaphorically. Last is Degas, which once again has the symbol of the sun. The rune corresponds to the temperance tarot, the half-moon astrological sign, and the spruce tree. The rune fits with concepts like evolution, the bright light of day that cheers after the dark night to reveal and clarify, which actually reminds me of the Green Lantern's Oath, the third eye, clarity, certainty, and security. The reading can be seen as an indication that good things are coming, and I want to end on a high note, so I will not be speculating on the reverse reading. And that's the entire deck. And I wasn't lying when I said this was an anonymous donation. It was a nice excuse to look over some hand-drawn artwork and to go over some runes. But I think the question on everyone's mind is if I believe in this sort of thing, and I do not. These sorts of fortunes are so generic that they can almost always be made to fit into some situation concerning the Quarant's life. There's a Weird Al quote that comes to mind, although the tune still eludes me. There is a Weird Al quote which comes to mind, although the tune eludes me. Now you might find it inconceivable, or at the very least, a bit unlikely that the relative position of the planets and the stars could have a special deep significance or meaning that exclusively applies to only you. But let me give you my assurance that these forecasts and predictions are all based on solid scientific documented evidence, so you would have to be some kind of moron to not realize that every single one of them is absolutely true. That being said, if you do find meaning in this sort of thing, who am I to stop you? Whatever helps you get through the day. And sometimes, the universal nature of these readings can help with feelings of being part of something larger than the individual. That these archetypes reveal a greater connection to the human experience, and as a result, let the reader feel a little less alone cosmically. That being said, there is one more rune-related topic I want to entertain with this video. When I was a kid, I found this stone with letters on it in a cemetery, and I thought it was a magic rune stone, so of course I kept it and it has been living in my sock drawer until now. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's a piece of a headstone. On one hand, I should probably return it. But on the other hand...